Um, uh, our speaker this morning is um, our pastor. He is currently um, um, a pastor in the Central Peninsula One in district in Cape Town. Uh, he's none other than, than uh, Stumisile Poswa. He, um, he, is, uh, he obtained his ministerial training in um, Heartland College in Virginia in the US. And um, he had uh, a privilege of preaching in so many countries. I, I, I think he, had, he can greet us, all of us, in different languages from all over the world that he has traveled. He, is, um, he has um, preached in South Africa, Botswana, Swaziland, Zambia, Malawi, Kenya, Austria, New Zealand, Fiji, and, so, and just few of the countries that he has been preaching uh, at. And um, we'd like to welcome you, uh, Pastor, Mapo, uh, Pastor Poswa. And um, we are ready to receive the word of God this morning. And we are sure that God we, is going to be, to be using you powerfully today. Uh, over to you, my pastor. Uh, good morning. I hope I'm uh, audible. Um, thank you so yes, much. You for are, my thank you so much. Thank you so much for that introduction. Uh, one thing that I think I, I I forgot to mention as I sent my bio is that I'm a married man. Uh, my wife's name is Angeline, and we have one daughter. Her name is Iana. Um, my wife is is actually from Kenya, uh, so I will greet you by saying Habari Asubuhi uh, this morning. Good morning, Moleni. Um, I think uh, we, I thank the Lord for the privilege to come before you and share the message from God's word this morning. And I know that our time is not, um, I, I don't want to take over the time for prayer. And um, just before I begin the messages for this week, I would like to read from First um, Chronicles chapter 12 and verse 31. Uh, excuse, excuse me, it's verse 32. First Chronicles chapter 12 and verse 32. The Bible says um, here, and of the children of Issachar, which were men of understanding, that had the understanding of the times, to know what Israel ought to do, the heads of them were 200, and all the brethren were at their commandment. So here the Bible tells us about the children of Issachar, who actually had an understanding of the times. They knew the times they lived in. Now, what did that help them to do? It says to know what Israel ought to do. So these uh, children of Issachar, they knew what time they were living in. You know, the Americans will say, you know what time it is. <laughs> so they, they had an understanding of the times and they knew what Israel ought to do because of the times that they were living in. It is very important for us as God's people to know and to have an understanding of the time so that we may know what spiritual Israel ought to do. And as we begin, I want us to read from the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 24. This is a well-known verse and verse 14. This is where we're going to begin this morning. The Bible tells us this, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Let us bow our heads for a word of prayer. Dear Father in heaven, we thank you so much for waking us up this morning. We thank you for the privilege of opening your word so early in the morning. And Lord, to be honest, we do not want to spend so much time waking up early in the morning to pray together. And at the end of the day, we are not transformed. We remain the same people. We want not only a revival, 
but a revival that comes with a reformation. We want to be awakened from spiritual death. We want to be awakened from spiritual slumber. We want, Lord, to be energized by the Holy Spirit. We want to be filled with the Holy Spirit so that the fruit of the Spirit may be manifest in our lives, that love, joy, peace, and all the elements of the fruit of the Spirit may be manifest in our lives. And not only that, Lord, we want to experience, we want to experience the infilling of the Holy Spirit so that we can use the gifts of the Spirit for the glory of your name. We plead that you speak to us this morning. Let me decrease and you increase. And may your holy angels be where all of us are in the different parts of the country and of the continent and of the world where we have gathered from. We thank you, Lord, for hearing this prayer. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes. Um, Praise the Lord uh, this morning. The Bible tells us here, it's interesting that this verse is found where Jesus was asked by his apostles, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? So the, the, the disciples had heard Jesus speak about uh, the, 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 what would happen to the temple. And in the interpretation, this meant the end of the world. This meant the second coming of Jesus. This meant the end of everything. And they asked Jesus, when shall these things be? And Jesus spoke about the different signs that would actually come up, um, that the different signs that would tell us that our Savior's coming is near. He spoke of wars and rumors of wars. He spoke of famines in different places. He spoke of earthquakes. He spoke of pestilences, diseases, of, of, of epidemic um, proportions that, that, that he spoke about here. And, and, and we see these things happening. We see different natural disasters in the world. We see um, the, 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 the famine increasing in the world because of especially droughts that have been taking place. Um, some attribute this, of course, to, to, to global warming. And we have seen the depletion of, 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 of the productivity of the world. We have seen the, 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 the different kinds of impacts that it has had. Right now, for example, our brethren in the northern part of Kenya and also some parts of Somalia have lost a lot of their livestock, their, their sheep, their goats, and these are pastoral people who live a pastoral life. And, 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 and our hearts bleed for them. And remember, uh, just a, a year or so ago, East Africa, especially Kenya and Tanzania, had, had, had experienced the plague of the locusts that ate up a lot of their livestock. Even here in South Africa, a few years ago, I remember I was in Glen Grey district in, 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 in Queenstown and surrounding areas, and a lot of people we're losing cows and their livestock because of these things. And we see that all these things are happening. The rate of violence is, has increased in society. The Bible has told us that, 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 that this would happen. The, 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 the rate of the killing and, 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 and the brutal murder of women uh, in South Africa, especially, I don't know about other countries and also children and even men um, for that matter, you know, people being burnt alive, people being cut into pieces. It's not just the killing of people, but the way that people are, are being killed that is becoming horrendous. And we are living in fear, especially our dear women and children. That's why we are now in South Africa having this 16 days of activism against gender-based violence and against violence against children because we are living in these serious times. And, 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 and but the, this, is the, this is the thing, when Jesus speaks these words, he keeps on saying, but the end is not yet. And then later on, he says in verse 18, Matthew 24, all these are the beginnings of sorrows, or as it says in other versions, the beginnings of the birth pangs. So these things are not the sign that we are at the birth pangs. They are signs that we are at the beginning of the birth pangs. So after Jesus has spoken about all these things that are to come upon the world, 
a lot of them we are seeing in our society. We have many other problems in society. There is confusion about issues of gender um, in society. Uh, you know, people are so confused about gender that they are saying that there are more than a hundred gender expressions that are there in the world. And I'm not here to offend anyone, friends, but the Bible is very clear to us. The Bible says God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. So we see all these things happening morally. Society has gone haywire. There is infidelity in marriages, unfortunately, even in the church. We have um, uh, young people, old people who are struggling with moral issues. Yes, friends, I am not saying that we should be moralist and promote a salvation by works um, religion. But I think sometimes we have taken things so far that we have made it as if God is a, an immoral God or a God who does not care about our morals and how we live our lives. But when we read in the Bible, the Bible says we are saved by grace through faith and we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works. So as we, um, we, as we elevate the grace of God, as we show the centrality of the grace of God in our salvation and the cross friends, we should not forget that God's grace is not only there for our forgiveness, but also for our transformation so that we can be new creatures in Christ Jesus and live a life. But we are seeing all these things both outside and in the church. Now, go with me to the book of Revelation. So the Bible says, and then Jesus says, this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world as a witness to all nations, and then shall the end come. And when we read in the last book of the Bible, we are here given, uh, we are here given, friends, the last message that is to go before the world, before the second coming of Jesus. Now, why am I saying that this is the last message that is to go before the world, before the second coming of Jesus? Because after the giving of this message, um, which begins in verse 6, um, called the three angels' messages, in chapter 14, verse 6 uh, to verse 12, we have the three angels' messages there which we are going to take our time to go through this week, of course, in a summary format because of the time that we have together. And after these messages are given, look in verse 14, what the Bible says. It says, and I looked and behold a white cloud and upon the white cloud, one set like unto the son of man, having on his head a golden crown and in his hand, a sharp sickle. And another angel came out of the temple crying with a loud voice unto him that sat on the clouds, uh, thrust in thy sickle and reap for the time has come for thee to reap for the harvest of the earth is ripe. So this angel, is sit, telling the one who is sitting upon the throne, who is none other than Jesus. He's sitting on the cloud, a symbol of the second coming of Jesus. As we see in chapter one, behold, he is coming with clouds and every eye shall see him. So here, this is Jesus coming back for the second time, friends. And he also has on his head a golden crown because now he's not coming as a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief, no friends. He is coming in all his glory like Matthew says in chapter 25, and in the glory of the Father and the glory of all the holy angels. And he's coming as King of kings and Lord of lords. But before this coming, before this harvest is ripe, there is the preaching of the gospel. The Bible tells us when it speaks about the first angel's message, it says that this angel's this angel has the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth. So the coming of, 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 of Jesus is preceded by the preaching of the three angels' message to warn the world and to prepare the world. The same way, friends, that the, 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 the children of Israel had John the Baptist, who was an Elijah prophet, to preach, to prepare the way, to lay the foundation, to prepare the way for the coming of Jesus in his first advent. God in these last days has a people that he has set up upon the earth to preach the everlasting gospel, to tell the world 
and to prepare the world for the second coming of Jesus. And we see that the effect of this message will be to divide the world into two groups, friends. These groups will actually be divided into those who are ripe for the, for, for the harvest and to be harvested for heaven, friends. And later on, when you read from verse 17 to verse 20 of these verses, you will find that there is also a harvest, um, the, the, the harvest of the grapes that are trodden without the city, which is now the harvest of the wicked who will not have chosen Jesus. So this message will actually divide the world into two. And this is the message that we have been given to preach, friends. This is what God has given us to, teach, to, to preach to the world in preparation for the second coming of Jesus. Now, this for me is the most important thing that we can ever do. This is the most important work that we can engage in. Actually, friends, if you read in Testimonies, Volume 5, and this is found in page 455, we are told these words, God has called his church today, this, uh, this day, as he called ancient Israel, to stand as a light on the earth by the mighty cleaver of truth, the messages of the first, second, and third angels. He has separated them from the churches and from the world to bring them to a sacred nearness to himself. He has made them the depositaries of his law and has committed to them the great truths of prophecy for his time. Like the holy oracles committed to ancient Israel, the, these are a sacred truth to be communicated to the world. The three angels' messages represent the people who accept the light of God's messages and go forth as his agents to sound the warning throughout the length and the breadth of the earth. God has given us a message, friends, to give to the world. The world is perishing. The world is in need, is in need of this message. The world is perishing for this message. And friends, God has given us a message. Satan knows that God has given us a message. Satan knows that this is the message that is to prepare the world for the second coming of Jesus. Satan knows that if we go forth conquering and to conquer, if we go forth filled with the Holy Spirit, Satan knows for sure that his end is near. And friends, this, Satan is on survival mode. And guess what Satan will do? He will make sure that he occupies us with everything else except for this message. He is going to make sure, friends, that he keeps our minds engrossed with the things of this world. Yes, they may be good in and of themselves, friends, but they will not be the main agenda of the day. And if anything is not the main agenda of the day, it is from the devil. Remember, friends, the devil can speak the truth. Jesus, I mean, when, when, when Paul and Silas were in Philippi and they were preaching the gospel, there was a demon-filled lady who pointed at them and said, these are the men of, men of God who show unto us the way of salvation. But that lady, even though the statement was truth, because it was going to divert people and confuse them between the spirit that actuated the apostles and the spirit that actuated this lady, Paul and Silas actually rebuked this lady. Why? Because she was diverting the people from the main issues of the day, even though what she was saying was truth. So it is not evidence that it is from God because something is true in and of, of himself. 
And I'm worried, friends, that we as the people of God have been diverted from this message that is to prepare the world. Friends, we have countries in places like the 340 window that have not even heard of the name of Jesus, let alone the 300 messages, while we are busy with other agendas. You know, Satan is going to engross our minds with the politics of the day. And I'm not going to get into details with those things. Satan is going to engross our minds with the agendas of the day, the agendas of the different political parties of this world, the agendas of the different groups of this world, the agendas of the different issues of this world. Satan is going to engross our minds with the fashions of this world. Satan is going to engross our minds with the cars of this world. While we buy a new one, we see a new one that we like and expand our means and the means that God has blessed us with to be the fuel for the going forward of the gospel. Satan is going to make sure that he makes us to spend these means that God has blessed us to push his own agenda and to stop us, friends, from actually pushing the agenda of Jesus. This is the danger that we are in because Satan knows what time it is. The question that I have for you and I, do we know what time it is? Because if we are like the children of Issachar, we will know what time it is. We are going to know the times we are living in so that we may know what Israel ought to do. Friends, we are not living in normal times. If we thought we are living in normal times, we are in serious trouble because we are living in times of great importance. And the decisions that we make now have an impact, not only on our lives, but on the lives of those who are next to us who do not know what we know. God help us to awaken to the times that we're living in, to awaken to the present and momentous times that we are living in so that we may know what Israel ought to do. There's nothing wrong with playing when it is time to play. But there's serious, something seriously wrong and it will have detrimental and eternal consequences when we play when it is time to watch and pray. May God help us to know that we are living in serious times and to align our lives with God's agenda at this time. Let us pray, Father in heaven, by your grace, we pray that you may awaken us to the times that we're living in and to the meaning that they have in our lives. Help us, Lord, not to waste time anymore, but to align ourselves with the work that you are doing to prepare the world for the second coming of Jesus. It is in your mercy that you have entrusted upon us such a solemn message. Help us to understand this. And Lord, I thank you for the children that you have here, your children, who have taken time out of their precious sleep to come and pray together because they see that times are not normal. Bless this ministry and bless this work and bless all of your children who have joined us today. May your spirit rule in our hearts. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for hearing this prayer for we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.